Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over some worked examples to show you how to use the graphical method and the numerical method to find the half-life of a radioactive source. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. We'll start by looking at two examples for the graphical method. Question 1 says that the activity of a radioactive source over time is shown in the graph below. Determine the half-life of the source. So you'll see we've got activity in kilobecquerels against time in days, and our curve starts up at an activity of 80 kilobecquerels. Because the time is in days, we should expect a half-life value that is going to be in days as well. We don't have to change the units of time to anything else. So firstly, we identify the starting activity, which is 80 on our curve. We can then go to half of 80, which is 40, and put a mark on our curve. So I'm just going to use a red cross there. And then we can draw a dashed line horizontally from our point along to the curve. So it looks like that. And then from the curve here, we want to draw another dashed line down to the x-axis, like so. And you'll see that chunk of time from the origin to this dashed line here. It's going to be more than five days, so maybe roughly about six days. So we can write that as six days there. So from the graph, we can see the half-life is six days. Now notice that we've only done one half-life here, but if you wanted a more reliable answer, then you could find maybe one or two more half-lives there and find the overall average half-life. But in this question, because it didn't say to determine the average half-life of the source, then doing it once is sufficient. Question 2 says that the following results are obtained in an experiment. So we have time in days and corrected count rate in counts per minute. Remember, corrected count rate is just the same as the activity of the source. Part A says to plot a graph to show these results. So if you plot a graph, it should look something like this. So you should have corrected count rate on the y-axis with the units of counts per minute. I've just used CPM for short. And then on the x-axis, we've got time in days. What you would then do is come up with your scales. So on the y-axis, I've gone up in tens there. And on the x-axis, up in ones in terms of days. And then you would plot your points. So for the first point, we've got 0, 130. So you would go along to 0 and up to 130 and put your cross there. Second point is 2, 85. So you'd go along to 2 and up to 85 and put your cross and so on. Then what you would do is plot your curve of best fit. So you'll see I've used Excel for this to plot a nice curve of best fit. But if you're doing it freehand with pencil and graph paper, then you want to try and fit that curve to the points as best you can. Part B says to estimate the half-life of the source from these results. So now we can just do the same as what we did in question 1. So we want to identify the starting activity, which is 130. We then want to half that to 65. So we can put our red cross there. And we then want to draw our line along and down. So a dashed line along to the curve. And then we bring another dashed line down to the x-axis. And if we look at the scale on the x-axis and go from the origin to this point here, you'll notice that that chunk of time is roughly 3.4 days. So we can then say that from the graph, our half-life is equal to 3.4 days. Again, we've only done one half-life instead of doing two or three, but you'll notice the question again did not mention average, so doing it just once is sufficient here. And just for interest as well, if you were to half that again, you would get roughly along here, which is fine, you would still reach the curve. But if you were to take a third half-life, you would be halving that number of 32.5 again, which would be down here somewhere. So if you were to half that 32.5 and start here and go along, you'll notice that you wouldn't actually reach the curve curve on the graph. So in this case, you would only actually be able to get two half-lives anyway and take an average from that. But as we've said, once was enough for this question and the half-life was found to be 3.4 days. We're now going to do four worked examples for the numerical method. This will show you how to tackle questions where you're asked to find the half-life, the final activity and the initial activity. Question 1 says that the initial activity of a source is 1,600 becquerels. After 120 minutes, the activity has fallen to 100 becquerels. Calculate the half-life of the source. Well, remember we want to write down our initial activity, 1,600 becquerels, and we then want to half that each time until we get to the final activity. So halving that gives us 800 becquerels, halving that again gives us 400 becquerels, and halving that again it gives us 200 becquerels, and halving that again gives us 100 becquerels. We then need to count the number of arrows as that tells us the number of half-lives. So we've got one, two, three, four half-lives. So we can say that four half-lives is equal to our time of 120 minutes. So four half-lives equals 120 minutes, which means that one half-life is equal to 120 divided by four, which gives us 30 minutes. So the half-life of the source is 30 minutes. Question 2 says that in 6 years the activity of a source drops from 400 kilobecquerels to 12.5 kilobecquerels. 
Part A says to calculate the half-life of the source. So we start by writing down our initial activity of the source, which is 400 kilobecquerels. We then want to keep halving that until we get to 12.5 kilobecquerels. So 400 halved gives you 200 kilobecquerels. Halving that gives you 100 kilobecquerels. Halving that again gives you 50 kilobecquerels. Halving that gives you 25 kilobecquerels. And lastly, halving that again gives you 12.5 kilobecquerels. We then want to count the number of arrows, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means we've got 5 half-lives in a time of 6 years. So we can write 5 half-lives equals 6 years. And now to get 1 half-life, we divide 6 by 5. So we get 6 divided by 5 equals 1.2 years. Part B says what fraction and percentage of activity remains after 6 years? Well, to get our fraction first of all, we just want to take our final activity and divide it by the initial activity to get a fraction. So for the fraction, we have 12.5 divided by 400, which if you put into your calculator simplifies to 1 divided by 32. So that's our fraction there. Our percentage of activity after 6 years is going to be the final activity divided by the initial activity times 100. So we get 12.5 divided by 400 times 100, which gives us 3.1%. Now notice this is just the same as the fraction times by 100. So we could have just times 1 over 32 by 100 to get the same value here. So what this means is that only 3.1% of the original activity remains after 6 years. Question 3 says that a radioactive source has a half-life of 4 days. The initial activity is 5,000 counts per minute. Part A says what is the count rate per minute after 16 days? Well this is an example where we're given the half-life in the question and we're trying to work out the final activity instead of the half-life itself. So we're going to do similar things to what we've done in questions 1 and 2 but they might be in a slightly different order this time. Well firstly what we need to do is find our number of half-lives that are going to happen in this 16 days. Well we're told the half-life is 4 days so over 16 days we must have 16 divided by 4 which is 4 half-lives happen. So we can then write down our initial activity of 5,000 counts per minute. So we then want to half it four times so we have our four arrows which correspond to four half-lives. So 5,000 counts per minute halved once gives you 2,500 counts per minute. Halving that again gives you 1,250 counts per minute. Halving that again gives you 625 counts per minute. And finally, 312.5 counts per minute. So we've got four arrows, which means we've halved it four times, so that's what we want. So we can therefore write that our count rate per minute after 16 days is equal to 312.5 counts per minute. Part B says what fraction of the original sample remains after 16 days? Well, just like we did in question 2, to find the fraction, we want to take our final activity and divide it by the initial activity of 5,000. So to get the fraction, we do 312.5 divided by 5,000, which is 1 16th. Lastly, question 4 says that a radioactive isotope has a half-life of 45 minutes. After a period of 3 hours, the isotope has an activity of 22 megabecquerels. Calculate the initial activity of the radioactive isotope. So in questions 1 and 2, we were told to calculate the half-life of the source. In question 3, which we've just done, we were trying to work out the final activity of the source. And this question is asking you to calculate the initial activity of the source. So this one's going to be quite similar to question 3 in that we're going to start with our division first and then use our arrows but because we're trying to find the initial activity our final answer needs to be a larger number than our final activity of 22 megabecquerels. So we're going to need to do something slightly differently here. The first thing to notice though is that we've got half-life in 45 minutes and we've got our time in 3 hours. So it makes sense to try and get these two units of time into just one unit of time. So what we're going to do is take the 3 hours and change that into minutes just so that we have a consistent unit of time throughout this question and that's going to be minutes so our three hours converted into minutes is 3 times 60 which equals 180 minutes so then we can do our division where we work out how many half-lives are going to happen in that time of three hours or 180 minutes so we can then do 180 divided by the 45 which gives us four half-lives just like in question three but here's the difference between this and question three since the question asks for the initial activity, we need to double the final activity four times rather than halving it. And that's because we want to end up with a larger number because that's going to be the initial activity. Remember, activity will always decrease over time. So we can start with our 22 megabecquerels, which is our final activity, and we want to double this four times. So we're going to have four arrows. So doubling that once gives us 44 megabecquerels, doubling again. 88 megabecquerels, same again gives us 176 megabecquerels, and lastly 352 megabecquerels. So we can therefore say that the initial activity is equal to 352 megabecquerels.
That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.